This is Nerds with Words, unlocking the vault of knowledge one nerdy fact at a time. I'm your host, Wonder Nerd, and today we're talking about gross dragons, brainless blobs of water, and dirt. Today's questions include, why do Komodo dragons kill their prey with bacteria in their mouths? That's because they absolutely do not. Jellyfish have evolved over millions of years without brains giving hopes to politicians everywhere. Is tilling soil adding to global warming? Why, yes. Yes, it is. No shock there. And we'll finish off today with my favorite puns at the moment. Let's get started. Alrighty, my dear nerds, it is story time. There once was a man who didn't know anything about science. His name was Walter Affenberg. He used a single observation in the 1970s to make a wrong conclusion and published a document of lies in 1981 about how it's bacteria in the mouths of Komodo dragons that kill their victims. But have no fear, my dear nerds. The hero of this story, Brian Fry, at the University of Queensland, started a study in 2009 to set out to prove that Affenberg was a joke. Side note, just Google this guy. Like, Brian Fry. Literally, he's playing with venomous snakes and deadly reptiles like they're puppies. It's ridiculous. Bro's insane. Um... <clears throat> Getting back to the story, zoos said no to giving Fry bodies of Komodo dragons to autopsy because they believed Affenberg's lies. When Fry finally got two Komodo dragon bodies for an autopsy, he discovered something not so shocking. It was not the bacteria that killed their victims. Who would have thought that? <laughs> Certainly not me. In fact, it was found that Komodo dragon's mouths have less levels of bacteria than mammals, especially carnivores. It was actually venom glands in the lower jaw of the Komodo dragon that releases venom into the saliva, where they use a not-so-scary technique called the bite-and-rip technique. If you happen to find yourself to be bitten by a Komodo dragon and happen to escape, the venom will cause some super fun symptoms like blood loss where you literally lose the ability to make clots to stop you from bleeding and paralysis. In conclusion, never trust a scientist that draws his conclusions from a single observation. Because chances are they're as wrong as those who think just a mustache looks good. <laughs> Andrew and Tyler, moving on. Starting our new topic with a fun fact, jellyfish are not fish. Crazy, I know, but they are part of the zooplankton family. Even though most of the family are microscopic, jellyfish share the same evolutionary tree branch as coral and sea anemones. If you get that reference, you get an imaginary gold star. Some more fun facts are that jellyfish are 95% water, and it is my personal opinion that we should adopt the phrase, drink more than a jellyfish is. I know it doesn't make any sense, but it makes me smile. So get on that, nerds, and make it the new fetch. Much like Florida Man and the entirety of the Senate, jellyfish have no brains, but nerves that can detect, touch, temperature, salinity, and response to external stimuli like food. Speaking of food, they have no stomachs. That's all I have to say on that. And much like my first boyfriend who dumped me for another girl when I was in 8th grade, jellyfish have no hearts, yet I bet they write better poetry than him. Also, if you need some nightmare fuel, some jellyfish actually have eyes. Isn't that just great? Just imagine a brainless, heartless creature looking at you through the water, but you can't see them and they're mostly water. Happy nightmares, everyone. Moving on. 26% of all greenhouse gas emissions are from agriculture alone, including tractors with diesel, fertilizer, cattle, and the topic of today, tilling. Without going too much into the science of it all, nitrogen is meant to stay in the soil to keep plants, well, alive. But the act of tilling in agriculture releases nitrogen into the air, effectively killing the soil. But have no fear, we have nitrogen fertilizers that further kill the soil. Also, have you ever wished to see the long-term effects of tilling that ruin the soil and destroy the topsoil? Well, just Google the Dust Bowl. Yeah, lots of fun pictures of people gagging on dust that looks like a sandstorm and gives people pneumonia. It even got to the point people were eating dirt because there's so much of it in the air. Do you want some solutions? Well, luckily I don't have to do any work since there's already a documentary called Kiss the Ground. Now, my dear nerds, we move on to my favorite part of the podcast where I cause the following symptoms, laughter, groans, and curses on my family and their descendants. Time for puns. Why should you stay home in a bad snowstorm? Because it's a 
the lizard. <laughs> Get it? Because we were talking about Komodo dragons earlier. <clears throat> Would you rather kiss a shark or a jellyfish? Well, the jellyfish, obviously, because it's a no-brainer. <laughs> Do you know the shovel was a groundbreaking invention? <laughs> Get it? Because it breaks the ground. <laughs> Alrighty, nerds, before you go back to the mundane, immerse yourself in the extraordinary by trying to learn at least one random useless fact a day. You can torment your family, your co-workers, and random strangers just by talking. How fun is that? Links to the articles for this podcast are in the bio. This was Nerds with Words, where I spend my time talking about things that make me happy. Because the world is a depressing place, and laughter makes your neurotransmitters trick your brain into believing you're actually happy. Well, my nerds, stay curious, stay nerdy. Bye, nerds.